was the night before Christmas, undead stirred with delight. <laughs> in Villador, they spooked in the eerie night. Grim Santa soared, spreading holiday fear. Yet jolly Aiden, his elf, brought a festive cheer. <laughs> Hey hey hey! Welcome to my channel everyone, I'm the Global Cherry and today we're going to be covering Dying Light 2's insane Christmas update, as well as other significant changes. Before I convince you to jump into this update, leave a like and subscribe to stay human. <laughs> It's been quite a while since I was last in Villador, and upon my return, I discovered some surprises along the way. <laughs> don't look in the bushes, don't look in the bushes. Yet, the best surprise in this game was the Gifts from Above event in the Winter Tales update, where Villador becomes your winter wonderland. Pilgrims, get ready to experience Christmas in Villador, where the entire city is covered with snow. Even the survivors were surprised to see snow for the first time, that they brought it inside the bazaar. Where is the snow coming from? Despite the city's fall, Villador's residents retain holiday cheer as the survivors and peacekeepers decorate their stations with beautiful Christmas ornaments. Aside from festive photo spots, what does this event have to offer you all in this game? Well, Techland has provided all these new gifts that you will definitely love when playing Dying Light 2, including an opportunity to dropkick Tiny Timmy here. That photo is going on the fridge. In the Gifts from Above event, our old friend Baka returns to Villador for the holidays with a vast assortment of new items for us stocked in his shack. He only deals in sweets, so in order to obtain these holiday goods, we collect the sweets and presents from Naughty Infected and complete bounties for him, which involve hunting Naughty Infected in many unique ways, like with a snowball or freezing them. Complete 5 daily bounties that refresh approximately every 44 minutes, and 3 weekly bounties to garner reputation points with Baka and rank up our agent level for better items and rewards. Baka has so many awesome weapons, including including the skull axe that glows in the dark, returns to you after throwing it to enemies, and even freezes them to death. This weapon has a way of making you feel like Kratos from God of War. Boy, they stole my weapon. The Dead Winter Bow can be used to freeze your enemies with custom-made freeze arrows. There's also a candy cane weapon in this event to beat the holiday spirit into the naughty infected. You're getting all these amazing items from Baka, and all you have to do in return is give him diabetes. He's undead, so he'll be fine. After seeing all these legendary items, I do wonder where Baka gets them. Then again, I won't question it. Our holiday vendor is not very communicative as he is a biter. I don't understand. Speaking of Naughty Infected, what kind of holiday infected will we encounter in Villador? We got Naughty Helpers swarming the streets who fill their pockets with candy. Naughty Bolters roam the city to steal sweets from children and presents from its residents. Those Grinch-looking creatures are very nimble, so catch those vermin and bring the holiday spirit back into the city. <laughs> Red Bull gives you wings. Mini virals half your size will charge at you after drawing themselves to any loud noise, which is very adorable to watch. <laughs> Besides the holiday zombies, there are more new variants of infected in the game. Toxic biters will release deadly clouds around themselves, infecting those inside. I've seen a couple of renegades myself get caught up in those clouds. <laughs> Incinerating biters will throw fire puddles around them, and freezing biters will stop enemies in their tracks. Virals have also gotten more vicious as some of them spin in your direction or carry gas tanks. New goon variants also wander in Villador, and alert other infected with their screams, especially banshees, to attack you in dark corners. <laughs> All of these new infected are great, but how does Grim Santa play a role in this event? Grim Santa is making up for lost time by spreading holiday fear in the city, but he's a very giving fellow. Each agent level you reach with Baka, you'll be able to write a letter to Grim Santa. Santa will then fly to a specific area in Villador and drop down an airdrop for you to loot mischievous helper gear and other presents. Run boy run to the airdrop's location and be wary as the airdrop will be guarded by new 
new infected, and Uncle Snows, frozen versions of demolishers. Uncle Snows are not very warm folk, as they will have a meltdown upon seeing you and toss colossal snowballs in your direction. Make sure to stack up on medkits and survive before and when reaching the airdrop. Otherwise, after dying, your airdrop will get destroyed and you won't get your presence. So try not to die, especially if you want a chance at getting 1 out of 5 mischievous helper sets. According to Techland's website, December 19-27 to is when you can get the trousers, shoes, and bracers. December 27 to January 3rd is when you can obtain the jacket, gloves, and hat. By the time it's January 3-5, to you'll have your entire mischievous helper gear set. So far, my favorite part of the outfit are the bracers because not only does it glow in the dark, there's snowflakes emitting out of them. Or, if you finish decorating the Christmas tree outside the bazaar, you can get the outfit that way and receive more gifts for your good deeds like grenades that explode with snow. To decorate the Christmas tree, you'll have to collect holiday trinkets from the infected, exchange them at the shop, and reach agent level 4 with Baka to purchase a decorations bundle. Then, you place them in the box near the Christmas tree. After that, you ornament the Christmas tree with a star topper, which you obtain from Santa's airdrops. Then, you purchase an ultimate decorations bundle once you obtain 20 star toppers and reach level 10. You'll actually level up quickly, so you'll receive the rewards much sooner than you think. In addition to these parts of the event, you can also experience boons, or in other words, buffs to enhance your skills. For example, as you parkour, you can jump even further than before. Aside from this Christmas event, most of the bundles for Dying Light 2 are on sale. The Hakon bundle is free, so you might as well get it. Aiden, I know I've made a lot of mistakes in the past, but my skin, it's making me feel sentimental. And, if you got any points left, I do recommend the Grim Santa bundle for 500 Dying Light points. The polearm weapon from this bundle is surprisingly very effective against volatiles and comes with freezing capabilities. It also comes with a paraglider, a Grim Santa suit, and other weapons. Even if you don't buy the bundle, you can still use polearm weapons to enhance your versatile playstyles by obtaining them from enemies or weapon vendors. I think Shenzhou and the Pilgrim Outpost have these new weapon types, especially nocturnal weapons specifically designed for effectiveness during nighttime. You can also use shurikens in the game, and after pairing them with a katana, you'll become Villador's one and only ninja. All these weapons come with new finishers and range from unique to exotic rarities. You'll also get more rewards from reaching participation goals. One Winter Tail present will give you 800 Christmas sweets. If you collect 60 Winter Tails presents, you get a Dead of Winter bow and a Deep Freeze arrow blueprint, which will save you spending sweets. If we as a community collect 9 million Winter Tails presents of any kind, we will get a Gingerbread Infected charm. In terms of patch notes, Techland fixed many bugs in the game, added new finishers, improved animations, added buffs to the cork charm, and made changes to cutscenes. Regarding finishers, you can now perform a finisher after successfully performing a perfect dodge, perfect parry, x-ray attack, and even when you're freeing yourself from a biter's grab. <laughs> I also didn't notice this new detail before, but when Aiden uses a UV light and a weapon, he uses his weapon to lightly push the infected away. In addition to these changes, Techland has ensured that after completing the game and entering New Game Plus, all your Night Runner tools will stay with you. They won't be available in several missions to make the story make sense, but you are able to use them when free roaming. I know there are a number of you who are feeling divided about the game, amongst others who are currently enjoying Dying Light 2, but I do believe you guys should give this game a chance. I think it's just a matter of waiting for new content to drop? Lastly, Dying Light 2 now has cross-gen save support, where PlayStation users can transfer their PlayStation 4 saves onto a PlayStation 5. Now that I've shared all these changes, have I convinced you to try out this event in Dying Light 2? What do you think about Dying Light 2's Christmas event? Are you enticed to try it? What are your opinions on Dying Light 2 currently and what are you looking forward to with the game? New weapons? New content? Let me know in the comments below. That is all for today. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more content like this. If you made it to the end of this video, here's my infinite supply of UV bars to get you through the perilous nights in Villador. Thank you for watching and that's all.
Under Villador's dread, a chilling tale is spread, yet in the darkness, your kindness is widespread. Eerie warmth to all in this haunting luck. Happy holidays to you, good night, and good luck. Oh no, this picture looks so wrong.